Hi, my name is Bokhadar Ahmedov. In this video lecture, we are going to solve a problem of finding orthogonal projection of a vector onto a plane. Well, let's say you are given a plane. So in order to explain a plane or any other space, you would need basis vectors. In order to explain a plane, you are required to have two vectors which are not parallel. So let's say you are given two vectors, a1 and a2, um, and we are going to explain the plane as the span of these two vectors, or as they all pos as a set of all possible linear combinations of these two vectors. Or usually, you you can write down this plane as the matrix where these vectors are going to be written as the columns of this matrix. It's going to be a one vector is here, and a two vector is here. For example, if your plane is in three D, then your two vectors are going to have three rows. If your plane is four, in four-dimensional space, then these two vectors are going to have four components, and so on. So now, let's say you are given some vector in the same space, and you would like to find its orthogonal projection onto the plane. Well, let's say uh, the orthogonal projection means that this dashed line, which connects the vector and the plane, is going to be orthogonal to the plane. And then you're going to draw this green vector on the plane. Well, in order to find this green vector, we are going to find this, we're going to use this formula where we have to do lots of calculations with the matrices. So in this, in this, in this video, we are going to do all of these calculations together. Well, usually when you are given a planes, you'll be given with the, with the general equation in the form of AX plus b y plus c z is equal to the d, right? And from this equation, we are going to find two vectors on the plane, and then later on, we are going to form this matrix M. So in order to find two vectors on the plane, we are going to find three points on the plane. So essentially, I'm just going to find the one point here, it's going to be A, the second point B, and the third point C, and the vector A1 is going to be simply AB vector, and the vector A2 is going to be simply AC vector. So how to find the three points A, B, and C from the general equation of the plane? Well, the general equation of the plane has three unknowns, right, x, y, and z, and there is still one equation, and you can just choose any values for t of these variables and find a third one from the equation. So let's do this. So in order to find the coordinates of the point A, I'm just going to set y to be equal to the zero, z to be equal to the zero, and substitute this to the equation of the plane. Well, again, you can set any values for the y and z. It doesn't matter what is this. But the easiest way would be to just 0 and 0. Then it's going to be x minus 4 times is a 0 plus t times is a 0 is equal to 0, which leads that x is equal to 0. So the a point is going to have the coordinates 0, 0, and 0. Well, in order to find the coordinates of the second point, b, I'm just going to set y to be equal to the 1 and z to be equal to the 0 and substitute this to the equation of the plane again. It's going to be x minus 4 times the 1 plus 2 times the 0 is equal to the 0. Well, that's going to, uh, well, that's going to be simply, that's going to lead that x is equal to the 4, right? So the b point is going to have the coordinates. It's going to be x coordinate is 4, y coordinate is 1, and, and the z coordinate is equal to the 0. And in order to find a c, I'm just going to set y to be equal to the 0 and z to be equal to the 1, and put this into the equation of the plane again. It's going to be x minus 4 times is a 0 plus 2 times is a 1 is equal to the 0 will lead that x is equal to the minus 2. And the c point is going to have the coordinates of minus 2, 0, and 1. Well, then the AB vector is going to have the coordinates like B minus A, right, which is going to be 4, 1, and 0. And AC vector is going to have the coordinates minus 2, 0, and 1. Well, just by, by just putting these two vectors as the columns of the matrix M, we're going to obtain actually this matrix M. So the M matrix is going to be 4, 1, 0, minus 2, 0, 1. Again, so if you're given a general equation of a plane, just find three points by just setting any values for the y and z. 
and by just finding the x from the equation. And then just connect the three points and find the two vectors. Well, then you can take these two vectors as the columns of this matrix M. Again, so you have to be really careful when you choose these vectors. The only thing which you need to be careful is that these two vectors should not be parallel. So they should have some angle between each other. So now, when we know the matrix M, we can calculate the projection vector of this x with the components 1, 0, and 4 into the plane using the following formula. We are going to evaluate the components of this formula uh, part, part by part. So first of all, I would like to evaluate this part of this, of this formula. So essentially, I would like to multiply the m, transpose to the m, and then find its inverse. Well, in order to find M transpose, I'm just going to create a matrix where I'm going to write down the columns of the M as the rows. It's going to be 4, 1, 0, minus 2, 0, and 1. And that's going to be multiplied to the 4, 1, 0, minus 2, 0, and 1. So the first row is going to be multiplied to the first column. It's going to be 17. The first row into the second column is going to be minus 2, uh, minus 8. 0, 0, minus 8 essentially. The second row to the first column it's going to be again minus 8. And the second row to the second column it's going to be 4 plus 1, essentially 5. Well, in order to find the inverse of a matrix, I'm going to use the formula. So if you remember, if you are given a matrix A with the components A, B, C, and D, then the inverse of the matrix is going to be the 1 over determinant of the matrix A times the matrix where, um, where A and D are going to be swapped between each other. So it's going to be D and A. Then instead of B and C, you're going to write down it's like minus C and minus B. Right? I hope that I'm correct. Then I'm just going to use this formula to find the inverse of the MTM. So MTM its inverse is going to be the determinant. It's 1 divided to the 17 times to the 5 minus 64. So multiply. I'm just going to swap the a and d with their places. It's going to be 5 and 17. And then swap the c and b as well. But I'm just going to multiply them with the minus sign. It's going to be 8 and 8. Well, if I evaluate the determinant, it's going to be 21. So I'm just going to multiply 1 over 21 to all of the entries of this matrix. It's going to be 5 over 21, 8 over 21, 8 over 21, and 17 over 21. Well, that's how we are going to find the inverse of the 2 by 2 matrix. Now, once we know this matrix, I'm just going to multiply this to the m from the left-hand side. right? So m just from the left-hand side, and m transpose x from the right-hand side part, and then find the projection vector. Let's do this together. So first of all, I'm just going to multiply the m. So let's find this m x m. Oh, okay. Let's find this one first of all. M to the m t m inverse. That's going to be four one zero minus t zero one multiplied to this matrix. It is five over twenty one, eight over twenty one, eight over twenty one and 17 over 21. Well, this matrix is 3 by 2. This matrix is 2 by 2. The resulting matrix should be also 2 by 2. Right? Uh, 3 by 2, sorry. Right? It's going to be the first row here multiplied to the first column. It's going to be 20 minus 16. It's 4 over 21. Right? The first row to the second column, it's going to be uh, 32 minus 34, it's minus 2 over 21. The second row to the first column, it's going to be 5 over 21, then 8 over 21. The third row to the first column, it's going to be 8 over 21. And uh, so the third row to the second column here, it's going to be 17 over 21. Well, that's going to be this multiplication. Uh, m to this inverse matrix. Now I'm just going to multiply this t is the m from the right hand side part, or I can just multiply the m to the x and uh, then then multiply this. So let's multiply the m to the x first of all. It's going to be four one zero minus t zero and one. 
multiply it as a 1, 0, 4, it means that the first column can be multiplied. So, um, this, oops, you see, so I made a mistake because it should be m transpose to x because I can't really multiply this again. So now, once I multiply these two matrices, I would like to multiply first of all m transpose to the x and then multiply this into this matrix. m transpose to the x, it's going to be 4, 1, uh, 4 minus 2, sorry, 1 and 0, 0 and 1. And this should be multiplied to the 1, 0, 4. Essentially, the first row should be multiplied to the 1 and the last row should be multiplied to the 4 and added. It's going to be 4 and 2. Right. It's going to be uh, the first row to this one, it's going to be 4 simply, and this one to this one, it's going to be minus 2 plus 4, it's 4 and 2. So that should be multiplied as a 4 and 2. It means that I've got a matrix which is 3 by 2, and I'm just going to multiply this as a 2 by 1. So at the end, I need to get simply a vector with the three components, right? So, well, essentially, I can do this in this way. So the first row to the first column means it's going to be 16 minus 4. It's going to be minus 12 over 21, right? Oops, sorry, plus 12 over 21. The second row to this one, it's going to be 20 plus 16. It's going to be 36 over 21. And the last row to this column, it's going to be 4 times t z 8. It is 32 plus 34. It's 66 over 21. Well, the projection vector, the orthogonal projection of this x into this plane, which is described as this matrix M, is going to be this vector. Well, this is how we are going to project the vectors onto the planes, but in general, this, this idea can be generalized on, the, on finding the orthogonal projection of a vector into any space, which is described as the matrix M. Thank you very much. I hope that this was helpful for you.